Tessa Blanchard, that's right, Tessa Blanchard is the new Impact Wrestling World Champion. And you got people celebrating this. People that are excited about this. People that think this is a good thing. It's not. It's dumb. It's stupid. It's disconnected from any sort of reality whatsoever. Totally and completely ridiculous. And this is even putting aside all of the allegations of racism and bullying and psychosis and all that other stuff, if you will. Just looking at this, just strictly from the concept of a 5'5", five 125-pound five, woman being a company's world champion is completely stupid and totally ridiculous. Ridiculous. How the hell did we get to this point in wrestling that we lost our way this much, that we got this disconnected from any sense of believability whatsoever? And I know what you're going to say. Well, you got to be careful because they're going to call you sexist. Well, too bad. If they do, they do. I don't care because somebody's got to stand up and say something about this dumb crap. Tessa Blanchard is a major wrestling company's world champion. And we're supposed to be okay with this? Like, look. In the necessary and required push towards continual equality, or actually trying to get to a point where things are truly equal, one thing we should not be doing is denying basic facts, logic, and reason in the name of that pursuit of equality. There is a reason women do not play in the NBA. There is a reason women do not play in the NFL. There is a reason that Ronda Rousey does not fight Conor McGregor in the UFC, just as a few notable examples. There are differences between men and women. And that is okay. It doesn't make men greater because they can do certain things physically that women cannot. It does not make women less as human beings because they can do some things that men cannot do and some things are different compared to men. These are just like basic scientific facts. Women can actually grow a child inside of them. Give birth to said child. Men cannot. Women can bleed for five days and not die. Men typically cannot. Women tend to live longer than men, which all put us in our graves, than men do. Women tend to be more flexible naturally than men do. That doesn't make men lesser men because they can't carry a child and give birth to it or all of these other things. There are just natural basic differences between men and women. And now all of a sudden this is starting to permeate in professional wrestling. Whereas intergender wrestling used to have a place, but it was a place designed to be a different type of attraction. And it was always grounded in the basis that the guy was going to be absolutely hated. Such treacherous, slimy, dirtball type of heel. Andy Kaufman type of intergender wrestling. It was not meant to be a serious athletic contest or endeavor that you did on a consistent basis. It was designed to get the guy as much heat as possible while at the same point in time telling an interesting story and wanting to see the lady be able to get one over on this grisy, grimy sleazeball heel that everybody hated. But Andy Kaufman wasn't trying to sit there and work competitive 50-50 wrestling matches, even with his scrawny self with women that were his size or smaller. Why? Because that wouldn't be believable. Everything about it was based off of heat and wanted to get a payoff to that heat. But now we have seen this permeate and perpetuate itself through professional wrestling where more and more we've got women wrestling 50-50 competitive contests against men. And in many cases, you can't even use a size argument that they're similar size because they are smaller, in some cases significantly smaller. And this is not to say that if done right, a woman should not ever be a world champion of a men's dominated wrestling company. I am not saying that. 
Let me repeat that. I am not saying that. If it was somebody like a China that you looked at and you said, that's a big, believable badass. Somebody who actually has star power. Somebody who is actually really over. Somebody that is actually really moving the needle for the business. If you had told me that you took her, this white, hot, superstar character, put her in an interesting story, and rounded it off with the right heel, I would buy that. Just like if you would have done it with Kong years back. Like if you would have built up to a moment where you got everybody looking at Kong and saying, that's a big bad bitch. And put her in an interesting story against somebody that annoyed the hell out of everybody as greasy, slimy type of heel. And at that time, the Miz or <laughs> Dolph Ziggler would have fit the bill. Now, she's actually bigger than them perhaps even more believable than them, those guys, as a byproduct, could get enough heat at that time to where the dynamics work. But none of that exists with Tessa Blanchard. She's six inches and 90 pounds smaller than freaking Sammy Callahan, but they're having 50-50 brawls where she's not selling half of the crap he's doing. They're having 50-50 matches, and she's beating the dude. Like, this whole thing is just ridiculous. And I know what you're going to say. Well, women can do great and wonderful things. They absolutely can. But when it comes to athletic endeavors, we have to get grounded a little bit on basic data and basic facts and just basic common sense and reason here. The fastest woman of all time, Florence Griffin Joyner. Back in the 80s when everybody was writing up, and you know she was too. At the 88 Olympic trials, with all that she was taking to magically transform and improve so much from 87 to 88 in that Olympic year, goes to the U.S. Olympic trials and runs a significantly wind-dated, even though the wind indicator was broken and there was no wind reading, even though that's complete total crap, runs a 10-4-9. 30 plus years later, that world record still stands. And even when you had about 20 years ago, Marion Jones coming to the fold, and she was obviously roided up to the gills. She's running in the 10 sixes, and she was easily the fastest woman in the world. And she had to use a significant amount of substances in order to get to that point. Yet a 10 six for the fastest woman in the world barely cuts the mustard in some states as a qualifying time for boys at the high school level in the 100 meters. When a woman dunks in the WNBA, it's celebrated like the second coming of Jesus Christ because it happens so infrequently. Yeah, how many dunks do you get per game in the NBA? It's like, who was it from the Women's World Cup team? Was it Carrie Lloyd? If I got the name wrong, I apologize. But everybody's making a big deal on social media talking about her kicking a 50-yard field goal at the Eagles facility. And you know, the NFL should sign her. It's great. She's a great athlete. Deserves respect and recognition. She also took twice the wind-up of a normal kicker. Did it in just practice calm conditions with nobody trying to block her kick and with no pads on. Like Christ Almighty, we've lost all important context here. Yet, she was also part of a Women's World Cup team that in a tune-up friendly type of match, if I recall, and I believe I recall correctly, got shut out like 8 to nothing by a group of 15 and under boys. But now you're expecting me to buy into and believe that a Tessa Blanchard is a credible and believable world champion. Based off of what? Because of her last freaking name? Give me a damn break. Like if she was monstrous, if she had some great reputation like a Ronda Rousey as a legit fighter, then that changes the dynamic a little bit, but even then doesn't automatically do that. What you're basically saying is that this female professional fighter, who naturally is not as strong as a man of the same size, goes up against a male professionally trained fighter, six inches taller and about 90 to 100 pounds heavier than her, and could go toe-to-toe -to, -toe to him. This is ridiculous. This is like my ex-girlfriend used to talk about this crap all the time. And she would say, I could beat your ass and I could do this. I would say, okay, 
lift me up then. And she can never lift me up. But I can sit there, lift her up, put her up like this. And she was about five foot four ish, 150 pounds, give or take. And I could sit there and do squats with her. But she couldn't even pick me up. But she could whoop my ass. Give me a break here. If you're going to do something like this, then at least have the story be so incredible and the heel have such a level of heat that it helps transcend that element of the lack of believability available otherwise. Or make sure that Tessa Blanchard is at least such a dynamic and interesting character that she is over enough that she legitimately moves the needle that it actually makes sense. And none of that is present here. None of that. And if you say, well, that's going to get more attention on them. Well, so would Katie Forbes drop into her knees in the middle of the ring and give an RVD a blowjob. Especially if he was doing this the whole time. That doesn't mean that it's helpful to the product. A fan could storm the rings, ring and start jerking off and then dropping a big deuce in the corner of the ring. That's going to get attention. That doesn't mean it's good attention. That doesn't mean it's attention that's going to be helpful, draw you more money, or move the damn needle for your company. And you're going to have people talk about, well, Captain Marvel was a woman. Captain Marvel had freaking superpowers. Give me a break here. And you're also talking about a comic book world based off of fantasy, whereas professional wrestling is fantasy that you try, try, or at least you're supposed to try to base off of reality. In a little bit of way, it is comparing apples and oranges when you do that crap. Well, I saw this professionally trained female MMA fighter knock out some dude. Was he also six inches taller, 100 pounds bigger, and a professionally trained fighter as well? And was it in the context of a real fight? Or, you know, like, the context is important here. If women could measure up like that physically and athletically on a consistent basis, we wouldn't have to have women's sports because it would be a true meritocracy and the women would be able to compete alongside the boys. And even if you bring up a thing while well, you're talking about younger ages, they have wrestling. Sometimes women win. Ladies win. Girls win. I'm sure they do. Also doesn't hurt that, especially at younger ages, we're talking about wrestling and we're talking about women that always hit puberty much earlier than the boys do. So there, there, is, there are differences here no matter what. Now, some of you are also going to bring up the thing, well, Rey Mysterio beating the Big Show isn't necessarily believable, and I completely and totally agree with that assertion. But at least Rey Mysterio is over enough as a star, and you could potentially work in an interesting enough David and Goliath storyline, and every once in a blue moon it could potentially work. But it doesn't work from the standpoint of being holy and truly believable. I agree with that. But you've got impact wrestling here. It's like the land of misfits that nobody wants to care about anymore. You got Joey Ryan and the crap that he does, and they think this is okay. And they're going to sit there and do this crap with freaking Tessa Blanchard. No wonder they would. Like, at least if you're going to have a woman do this, even though she's a couple inches shorter, she's also way beefier and way more believable. At least do it with Jordan Grace. At least do it with her, as annoying of a twit as she is. That I could believe and buy more than scrawny-ass Tessa Blanchard being a company's world champion. Like, what in the hell has happened to professional wrestling that this has become okay? You've now taken something that should have been significant. You've taken something that could have truly been historic and helped move the needle significantly and wasted it on somebody because of nepotism, their name, and stupid SJW garbage. Garbage. Women main eventing shows. They deserve it. Give them the spot. Women getting featured like men in the sense of getting equal treatment. Absolutely. If they deserve it and they've earned it, they should get it. Women becoming world champions without the character, the story, or the believability to actually carry off and beat bigger and stronger dudes than them is not okay. So putting aside all the racism and bullying accusations for just a second, the sheer fact that Tessa Blanchard is the Impact Wrestling world champion is ridiculous, and that's why I'm here. 
to make sure that I keep everybody square because this is crap.